OK, let's create a demo project now, which alternates between the PDF and Swift versions of this particular presentation. So I'm going to double click on my PDF label, and I'm going to insert a page jump action on here. And I'm going to set the page jump action to go to page one. So that's our current page. And basically, that's just going to create a button that returns to this page whenever it's clicked. I'm going to copy that action into our clipboard, press OK, double click on the PDF2 label, and then I'm going to go ahead in here and change this to be page 2 instead of page 1. So whenever you click this label, it'll go to page 2. Press OK, then I'm going to right click on the page tab down here and select duplicate. I can go ahead and delete this flash object from my page now on the second page and switch over to a web object. So I'll click on the new web object icon and from this little icon, browse for file icon at the end of the URL bar, I'll launch this dialog with our project folder in it and inside our docs folder, so that's from our main folder, docs, I'm going to double click on the PDF file that we have in there. That's our original PDF document that we were working with a couple lessons ago and I'll press OK and now we can go ahead and center this out on our page. So I'm just going to size it up by eye here. Normally of course you'd spend a bunch of time making sure that everything is exact and so forth but I'm just uh, sizing it up by eye for the purposes of this demonstration. Okay, so that's it for our project. Let's go ahead and press F5 to preview our project and we'll see how it works. Okay, so here we are on page one. As you can see, we've got our Swift presentation here. We can scroll down and we can magnify it and so forth. Let's go ahead and click on our PDF2 link. It takes us to page two and it launches our document here inside the Acrobat viewer inside our web browser object and that's because we had that installed on our system. Now of course if you wanted to check for this technology you would set up a dependency check and so forth. Okay so that's how we can serve uh, a document inside a web browser object and additionally there's web browser plugins available for other document types and you can create applications which check for those um, and basically direct your user to download and install them if they don't have them. And by doing so, you can deploy just about any kind of document type you can imagine via your web browser object if you like. So that's another option. So these labels, as you can see, they toggle back and forth between the pages, and the projects load quite quickly. So it's a fairly functional, useful way to do things, to alternate between different document types. It's not quite as quick as when we had the uh, Swift only with the single object, but it's still pretty quick and it's still pretty functional. So this is another way to think about doing things anyway. Okay, so let's go on to the next video lesson.